What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Twin Suns Podcast, episode 78. As always, brought to you by RunterraCCG.com. Today, I got to highlight something pretty sweet. We're going to highlight two different articles. One I'm going to save for the actual body of the show, which we're going to go through and discuss. But before that, I wanted to highlight this article here, which is a super sweet uh, lore world championship 2021 in-depth lineup analysis so if you are a player who is enjoying tournament formats or even just a gauntlet player a geek is here wrote this beautiful article diving into every single world's player and their lineup uh as they go through everything so you have what am i at the top with lulu poppy or even scion zoe nami and you can click on these here to bring up the decks as well which is super super sweet then you go down and he'll give you a full analysis of uh, Alan ZQ's, of course, the first world championship uh, winner. Gives you his full deck breakdown. You can click on the shelf oak to look at the deck. Gives you what it's good against, what it's bad against. Overall, as a lineup and breaks through everything. And then you can even go down to second places, Yamato's, and go through that entire process as well. And even Saiku's, or Shihu's, is I think how they were pronouncing on there. Uh, really crazy feel the rush Draven Ezreal and Zoe Heimerdinger lineup uh, and you can just go through this entire article and really just learn all about these other weird you know lineups that they brought but also successful ones and just in general it's a great recap of what Worlds was so that's what we're going to be doing here as well and joining me today is uh, Mr. Cruising. Yeah how's it going good happy to be here I'm really excited to talk about Worlds uh, I will say I was rooting for NA obviously of course the whole time but I mean, uh, I was also rooting pretty hard for Shihu. I loved his lineup. Uh, anyone who's in our yeah. Discord knows that I've been like harping on uh, on uh, um, on that deck, uh, Feel the Rush, for the entire season. I think it's been really underrated. It was so cool to see it uh, see it at Worlds. Like I did not expect anyone else to be playing it. Yeah, no. But I mean, it, it makes sense, right? The reason that the only thing holding it back is Bandle Tree. Yeah. And you can ban it, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, unless I guess they're bringing like three Bandle Tree decks, you can you can be toxic like that. I guess. True. <laughs> if someone did that at Worlds, man, all the power to kudos, you. Kudos, kudos. <laughs> yep, that'd be pretty impressive. Um, yeah, so we're definitely going to dive in. I mean, we're again, we don't focus all on tournament play like consistently throughout all of our shows, but I mean, this is the first world it's the world the world championships yeah. Yeah. We're, we're of course going to talk about it and we kind of talked about it a little bit last time um mostly we're a little upset i think it was uh, both of us at the lack of coverage of official coverage at least because i know uh there were some grassroots guys who crushed it we shouted them out last week but uh yeah there's a lack of good coverage for worlds in general but they definitely turned that around here and uh they, they got some crazy coverage from uh really from the beginning to the end every single match that was played at this top 16 event was was aired i mean not not one was missed so it was, it was pretty sweet so we're going to talk about worlds there's a quick little patch preview is or a patch that just came out uh just a bug patch nothing crazy there we'll discuss it real quick and then we'll probably round out the cast this week with uh ruben zoo's stream he he streamed on twitch and there were some spicy nuggets in there that i, I yeah. came in the first hour or so so we'll talk about that as well but Worlds in general, um, if just to start the conversation off, Cruz, and uh, you want to give me like a letter grade for how Riot did with Worlds? Uh, you want okay? There's two separate categories here. Do you want how Sorry. Riot did or how Worlds was overall? Because those are oh. two different things, in my opinion. We'll go with both. so like okay, all right. Overall, the tournament was great. Yeah. Like the format was awesome. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I format specifically like the whole last last man standing thing where you have to bring three decks. I always love that. That's a side note, but like the, the meta was great. There was a good variety of lineups. The matchups were exciting. It was really cool seeing the best players take these lines that like, you know, a lot of people might not see at face value and just watching their thought process as they go through. But the, the meta was, you know, interactive. And so you could actually see the skill come through in each one of those matchups, like everything about, the state of the game, fantastic. I really, really enjoyed uh, watching all of the games at Worlds. Yeah. Uh, Riot's coverage, uh, I, I go more towards a, a C, quite honestly. I don't want to be too harsh because, like I said, I did really enjoy the tournament. But, man, there were a lot of things that I was very disappointed in from from Riot's perspective as, as far as how Worlds was handled. Um, so, yeah, I just want to preface it. Again, love the tournament, 
But like, so there were just, I'm yeah. just going to quickly go over a couple things that really, really bother me. So first and foremost, okay. The goal for a world championship, other than obviously crowning a, a world champion and being the, the pinnacle of competitive event, is is it's it's an event that uh, you know gets players hyped. Everybody wants to watch it. They want to see the best players against each other. Uh, but there's also a lot of players who, you know, you and I play this game a ton. We have almost every card memorized, so watching a game is super easy. A lot of players don't have that level of extensive knowledge, right? right and so exactly. it's hard to make a casual player be able to follow along uh, with a card game stream. And one of the best tools to help that is an overlay. Yeah. Every Twitch streamer you see on Runeterra has it. It is like literally one click. You install it on your Twitch, and every card on there, you can hover over and read the text. Riot didn't have it. I sure. do not understand. Like, it's just the simplest thing to, like, you know, there was even, I feel like there was one point a card, I didn't even remember what it did, and I had to, like, hover over, and I was like, wait, what? Yeah, I mean, um, there's some fringe cards, especially with Bandle City out making a bunch of cards, like, that does happen. You're like, what does this do again? And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you, they didn't have it. And and you just, like, it's just such a simple thing that would have gone such a long way for all the more casual players to be like, hey, this is a cool uh, deck. What does this card do? Instead of having to, like, open up a tab and Google search it. Yeah, now I don't know if it was because technically they weren't on client and the overlay doesn't work that way because they were viewing probably through Discord or through whatever or in client if they had their own. I think Worlds was done on its own client, so they might have had their own. It was done on its own server for right. sure, but like they have an in-game spectate option. I assume that's what they were using. That's what I'm assuming, um, and then would the overlay function with that? Like regardless, that should have been figured out like for sure. Yeah. I, I don't know if there were slightly more complications than just like turning it on for, as a streamer. Like that's possible mm -hmm. that there were a couple. But like in general, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like you kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. figure out the best way to do that. That is a fair point. You know, I, the, the way I, I don't, I'm not super familiar with the inner workings. Well, I know that the the app that does the overlay, uh, at least the one I use, Mobilytics, it, it ties into your uh, your account. So like it's, oh, I think it probably only works for the person who's running the client locally. Um, okay, right? that's how but, it works. Gotcha. Uh, uh, but... You know, there are ways for Riot to get around that. And it's just, you know, if it would have something I would have liked to see some effort go into because it's just a huge impact on the viewing experience for players. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, so I may have I may have made it seem a little bit simpler than intended at the start. But, you know, my, my point is that it I would, I would have liked to have, been, have it been something that was, you know, addressed. But yeah, the other thing, the other major thing that really disappointed me was just the like the marketing and the hype around it. like. You want your first ever world championship. Like you want, you know, Riot has uh, so much, I don't know, uh, power to like influence people on all their social media. Like there are huge fans that like don't even know Runeterra exists that are big like League of Legends fans or whatever. The Riot Games Twitter account never once tweeted about this event, which is just crazy to me. Yeah. First, like, yeah, that one's rough. Um, you know, it's like you have four major games. How are you not going to, like, tell people about it? Yeah, they're uh, normally good at that, too. Like, normally those things get kind of pushed around through all their different platforms. You know what I mean? Like, like they, mm -hmm. they have big events that span multiple games, right? They have even just, like, random other things. Like, uh, they did the Pentakill, like, music show thing. Like, other yeah, accounts yeah, were yeah. retweeting that, right? Games was retweeting that. It's like, yeah, it definitely sucks. I mean, this is the world championship of one of your big four games. Like, how is that not getting broadcast yeah. from there? And, like, yeah, the, the in general, like, the... Uh, you know, the overall hype from the Runeterra Twitter was decent and okay uh, for this world. It's like, they did a really good job of highlighting um, a bunch of the, uh, like, highlight matches. So they would be like, oh, here's a, a quick highlight from this match. And it, or, like, they would just take like, yep. a cool clip. And it was like a sports center type clip. It was really well done. Mm -hmm. And it was after almost every match, right? Because they did put every match on there. But they would just kind of throw every little thing up there. And it was really nice to see. But yeah, like you said, but from like the Riot Games main Twitter, not out there. And then like yeah. also just kind of leading up to it, like there was like, you know, a week before I think they put something out and then like that's about it. It, it definitely could have been more hyped for sure. And I know we're being very nitpicky, uh, but we're going to to get to better things as well. This is We're going to start with the, the constructive criticism to start. Yeah, I, I really like, I really like, uh, like I don't want to sound like I'm dogging on all of it because obviously I am 
this passion about it because I want to see Runeterra succeed. I want right. to see it explode. And this is like just what a huge event that to have. And I, I should clarify, I can't say for certain that Riot Games never tweeted about Worlds. I just looked over the, like, the week leading up to it and I didn't see anything. Right, right. Um, but, to, but to your point, the main play Runeterra account what, what did really well with it. Like they, yeah. they even participated in the memes, uh, you know, which was, was just fun to watch. Like if you were following along, they, they had uh, Alonza's, uh interview where he was talking about how poland was the best region or whatever yeah. and you know they tweeted out that out so so that was that was all great and i so the player and terror account was great i just would like to see you know as much hype as you can for something like this yeah um uh so but you know it, it is what it is like it, it's hopefully it's something they'll improve on next time i know it was their first world there's a lot going on so yeah. i don't want to be too harsh you know like i said these are just things i'd like to have seen done better we got um, one more nitpick, right? Yeah. The, so the last thing that also bothered me, and maybe this is just me because I like to follow at such a detailed level, is it felt like information on the tournament itself was pretty hard to find. Uh, like, for I think example, it's totally fair, honestly. I, I, it was pretty yeah, tough to find. Like the the bracket for the, the top 16. Yeah. Like how is that not something that was publicly available on the website? Or yeah. Something? uh you know like hey my the player i'm rooting for just won cool who do they play next i have no idea because there's no bracket <laughs> right uh uh it, you know it's just like i this one is a little like i said not as as impactful but to me i'm like when I, i've run and organized tons of tournaments over yeah. the years and this is like the most basic part of it right the bracket is what the tournament is and like you want people to be able to follow along with it um so i would have just liked to have seen that somewhere yeah um you know so uh minor minor thing there i guess but still something i feel like that it was pretty simple to fix hopefully it will next time um yeah but i agree yeah, i mean i don't know the whole point is really to to try to get i mean yeah like you said crowned a world champion yes but it's a huge marketing moment for the game it's a huge selling point for the game and the viewership was solid i mean it wasn't like insane but it was solid throughout the whole weekend and they did three days straight of gaming and it was a lot of long streams each day and it was great. But yeah, like yep. you said, I mean, an overlay so new players could follow it would have been super great. Um, a little bit more advertisement from m multiple levels would have been super great. And then, you know, huge shout out to like Panda, who is, you know, one of our favorite casters there. He was great. He was he put out all this information before the tournament started on his Twitter mm -hmm. and things about the bracket, about how to follow along. And he's doing the same thing for the EU masters right now as well. But again, like that is kind of goes back to what we were talking about the, the previous week where it shouldn't be their job, right? Like it's not, right. yeah, he's a caster for them. That's great. That's but like, Ryan's job. yeah, right. The, the bracket and everything <laughs> like that should be more available easily. And, yeah, I mean, again, like it, it was a cool format, actually. Like, I liked the the round rob the four four player round robin. Everyone plays each other, and then the two best go yeah. forward. Like, that was a really group cool. Stages. Yeah, the group stage was super fun. Like, I was really interested yep. in the group stage too. Um, yep. So yeah, we'll move on to the positive thing. So a yeah, group stage gameplay was super fun to watch. I mean, what that yep. the day two. So it was like uh, eight players played on day one, and then eight players played on day two, and then day three was the final. Well, the day two. It ended up being everyone was one and one, so it came down to just like whoever won yeah. moved on. It was it was nuts. It was great. I, I mean, it made it a really exciting format. Um, yeah. And then yeah, after that, then you just have a, a normal bracket play of a top eight with a with a third place match as well. Uh, that was super fun as well for the for the final day. So between format format was I knocked it out of the park. I don't. I think the format was great for the top Absolutely. sixteen. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, the format was great. Uh, it, it was fun to watch. Like, yeah. uh, the, the casting was great. Like, it's funny. I had so like, I was joking a little bit because like some of the, the cast were so excited that they would like miss a super obvious play. But I've right. I've casted I've casted card game tournaments before, and when you're like, two well one when you're uh, when you're casting a card game, there's a lot of dead time that oh, you yeah. have to fill. And two, like, you know, you're trying to build hype and stuff, so it's easy to, it's, like, if you're in chat, you're like, it seems so obvious, but it's really easy to miss when you're under the pressure of casting. For sure. But it was, it was very well casted. The format was great. Uh, they did a good job explaining everything. It was very entertaining tournament. I really enjoyed all of it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I want lore to blow up as much as it can, and I just, uh, I feel like there's a couple little things that Riot can do to help it get there. And, oh yeah uh, that's my rant 
It was a good rant. I, I mean, I, I agree with all of it. I mean, it's I think it's all fair and it's all constructive. Yeah. It's not just like, oh, this kid's yeah, sucked yeah. or whatever. And like, yeah, like you said. That's my goal anyway. Yeah, I think it's a great goal. I think it's our goal as a cast too. Is just we want to grow the game as much as possible for, for always. And I think those are all solid things they could uh, definitely work on. And, you know, we talked about before. There's other things they could work, work on with communication before the event as well. We talked all about that last week. So this is mainly focusing on that top 16 three-day first world championship yeah. that we're discussing. Um, as far as the meta goes, I mean, it was a risky thing. Like they, they released a brand new region and this region's nuts. This is probably one of the most impactful regions that oh, yeah. dropped and it's just instant instantly impactful and we've talked about even just you're talking about the bandle tree in general which we're talking about before which is already so impactful and bandle city has one third of its cards out or one fourth of its card whatever it is right so it's yeah. this region is super powerful they did do a quick hot fix right before as well uh and they nerfed you know ruin runner got that hit a couple things got those uh a couple touches up right i forget exactly what i think shape stone got hit uh yeah, mrs rennington uh gifts rennington got hit yeah so <laughs> Those things got touched and up. And Ruin Runner, yeah. And Ruin Runner, yeah. So those things got touched up, and then they quickly went in. And, I mean, this meta was super exciting. It was – sure, there are some decks that got repeated pretty consistently, and there were some big bads of the tournament. Every time Zoe was on screen, Zoe Nami, the entire Twitch chat was just like, oh, Zoe Nami. And, like, Zoe Nami, like, lost a handful of games throughout the weekend as well. Like, it happens. Like, every deck yeah. seemed like it had good moments and bad moments. And, I mean – Going through it, I mean, like probably three of the most popular were what? Zoe Nami was super popular. Um, Dra- and was not in the finals. And was not in the finals. Uh, Draven and Caitlyn was super popular, which essentially is just uh, Draven Ezreal with a few different additions. Uh, that was a pretty popular deck. And some of those trap plays that were pinging things, so in order uh, for, whatchamacallit, the Scorched Earth to get set up for the kill, yep. were insane. I mean, there's like three games where that mattered. It was... It was super exciting that way. So like there's and uh, like a silver action was pretty solid as well with Demacia. Like there was like those are like the three I guess biggish decks. I'm probably forgetting one off the top of my head. And then like so many other things. So we're gonna go through and talk about this other article that we wanted to highlight from Runeterra CCG as well. Uh, and I'll throw it up on screen here so you guys can see it. But it, it's uh, super exciting. So the first deck um, we'll break down here is from I believe from Allen's lineup, which was. This absolutely insane Ezreal Vi shell folk, which uh, we were shouting out Panda, but Panda had put this out not that long before Worlds, right? Wasn't it like the week of? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, and this article, by the way, is written by Mezume, friend of the cast, so definitely uh, check this article out as well. Super solid article, just breaking down the three most impactful decks from the tournament. And I mean, or th- three most interesting decks, also, I guess, impactful in quotes, like Gregory and Chad says. But this one is. Uh, I mean, as interesting as it gets, right? We haven't seen Vi and Ezreal in a minute, uh, but they come back because this Bandle City core of Otterpus, Conchologist, Looping Telescope, and Shellfolk, along with Trinket Shade for just uh, extra Otterpuses. Otterpuses? Is that Otter? Out of Pusai? I have no idea. This uh, is going to get dangerous real quick. Yeah, Let's move really, on. really scary. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and Mini Morph. Um, just make this such a solid core of a deck, and Panda's just trolling the whole meta by putting this up. What, what did you think of this deck? I mean, it was super fun to watch when we did get to watch it. Oh, yeah. And and I, I'll say, like, if, if you're, whether you're, if you haven't, if you missed Worlds, uh, and whether you're a competitive player or a casual player, like, just tune into the VOD to watch. Yeah, Alon pilot some of these these games with this deck because it is super fun to watch. I feel like before we dig too far in, I'm gonna I'm gonna t- remind the, our audience what Curious Shell Folk does because this is one of the cards that initially I was like, wait a second, I have to look this up. What to remember? Yeah. So it's it's a six mana uh, follower from Bandle City. It has uh, it's a four six, and it reads: When you pick a card from randomly selected options, create a copy in hand. And reduce its cost by one. Yep. And so it's important to note that picking a card from randomly selected options is any time you do that. It's not like you know when you when you uh, invoke or something like that specifically. Right. It's right. If you play a, a prank, you get to get a copy of the card. If yeah, you, yeah. Your opponent's card. <laughs> I think at one point I saw. I feel like I remember. Um, uh, yeah. No. It, it was a prank. It was the prank that I saw that like was crazy. Like he, uh, Alan. Like pranked them, stole a card from their deck, and that like I think it was a uh, uh, a get excited or something yeah. that won in the game. Yep. Um, 
And so there's just so many cool options. So obviously, loping telescope and chronologist both give you things to yep. choose. Uh, time trick gives you uh, options to choose. There's yep. just so many cool interactions with this card and so many decision points and it opens up crazy lines that you don't think of are right off the top uh, that like, man, it's entertaining to watch. And if you're a competitive minded player watching him pilot this deck, you will learn too. It is, yeah. it is a very cool deck. But, it, and then like bring it to ladder. It's fun, but it's, it's not an easy deck to pilot. I'll say that for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, it's it, more on the control side of things. Uh, you know, you're, you're kind of, fitting in that world you don't have any access to heal unless your opponent's running some and you steal it with shelf plus pranks but yeah it's definitely just you know you're not running a ton a ton of units you're running a lot of spells you're blasting things off the board leveling Ezra up uh just having a insane insane amount of hand value between uh you know station archivist just getting you an extra fleeting spell looping and conchologist getting you extra cards in general uh you got draw cards you have really big answers for things like scion with uh with like mini morph or you know any big target like that so it's just a really solid deck puts a lot of pressure on and can be piloted insanely uh and now we're just seeing this core kind of get everywhere. I saw Panda today post about Lee Sin and the same Bandle City core. This Bandle City core is just crazy, man. Stop. Stop. Uh, stop. We, we, we should never mention Lee Sin in the show. I don't yeah. want to add to its popularity in Good, any way. Really good point. <laughs> really good point. <laughs> just screw that I mean, I'm that sure it's noise. a really strong package. I just don't like playing it. So. Yes. Oh. We don't. <laughs> if, if you queue into us, we'll, we'll just forfeit. <laughs> Lee Sin is my weakness. But yeah, this uh, this deck is super interesting, and like you said, I mean, it's it's highlighting it's got Bandle City in it, right? And actually, all three of the decks that Mesme is highlighting here, all the interesting ones, are all Bandle City decks. So you just see how big of an impact that region had on this world's already, and it just got released, right? This wouldn't have happened with Sharima, like when Sharima got released, right? It, there wasn't a whole lot going on. TF Fizz was a big part of that. There's a couple other decks that were really dominant then, but Bandle City is making its clean here and it's adding a good bit of rng to the game but i mean it made for an exciting viewership like moment yeah. i mean i really enjoyed watching that because that rng was yeah at times insane like how am i supposed to play around x from looping telescope i get it it's kind of nuts but as a viewer watching the best players play around their tiny bits of rng that they're messing with each turn is yep. super exciting um yep I completely agree. And, and I think there is a healthy medium amount of RNG that's good for the game where really good players can, can you know, take it into account and yeah. make decisions based off of it. Uh, but it also gives the uh, uh, lesser player a chance to win more often. Uh, yeah. yeah which, which is, which despite the fact that, again, I'm a competitive player, like that's a good thing for the game. You want the, the you know, the weaker player to be able to win sometimes. Otherwise, yeah. they're just going to get sick of it and leave the game, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, and and I'll say, I think, like you said, the Shurima didn't have this big of an impact. I think that we're seeing firsthand the result of, like, well, like the fact that this is the first expansion that was designed to be released in three parts. Right. And because of that, they're able to, like, focus it to know, okay, this is the set we're going to be releasing at once. We want it to have an impact on the meta. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'd say they succeeded. Yeah, seriously. I mean, that's a really <laughs> good point. Yeah. We really harped on that in that in the last interview with the the two creators of the set, or the two lead designers of the set. But like, this was the first time that they knew the release ahead of time was going to get split into three, and you can tell already. It's just, yep, it it is a functioning core already. That's solid. Yeah, right. there's a couple misses, but it's pretty functioning. I want to make a comment real quick too about um, Gregory in chat was was talking about people complaining about the RNG. You know, yeah, there's a lot of that going around I have, right now for sure. I have to play around. I think is the example we gave. Yeah, I've run played Judgment constantly now. Yeah, uh, and I feel like a thing that a lot of people that make that argument miss. Well, I didn't say miss, but I feel like a lot of the the thought behind that is they they don't realize the confirmation bias that's happening there because yes. Every once in a while, your opponent will get super lucky and get a judgment, and there's no way you can play around that. Yep, yep. But 95% of the time, that's not going to happen. Yep. Like you'll have to play around some more stuffs, more more stuffs. You have to play around more things, um, <laughs> and, and it makes it harder to predict. But it's not going to decide the game as often as people allude to. It's just, you know, the nature of of a gate of a mechanic like that. Yeah, it'll throw in some randomness, but it's not like game breaking like I feel like. 
is. Yeah, there's like a couple cards that are, and we've talked about this before, like Looping Telescope is right on the edge of, you know, since it can create any yeah. epic from anywhere, it's right on the edge of that level of like, ah, do we like this? Like, if they changed it to just epics from your regions, is that a little bit better? It's, it makes that pool smaller. Or if they just nerf the card slightly, like they have other options, and it's like right on that teetering point of like, is it too much RNG or not? But for the most part, I mean, I think a lot of these cards are pretty solid uh, in that level of adding have, excitement. Uh... We have some uh, uh, stuff that that uh, Ruben mentioned about looping telescope on his uh, yep. pod that we'll cover here in a little bit. Yep. Speaking of RNG. Yeah, really. So the next deck that we have to highlight, which is just insane, I I, I can't even believe, like I literally <laughs> can't even believe I'm getting to say that Heimerdinger was at Worlds thanks to Shihu. Uh, this this deck's insane. I mean, he brought Zoe at Heimer. Worlds. It finished I mean, third at Worlds. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Good point. Now, it didn't just show up. It it stood up and it yeah. freaking fought hard. And I mean, okay, taking a step back, I I hate Heimerdinger. So that's not even the most exciting part to me. But seeing the freaking three X. Do you hate him in in Runeterra or just like as a? Champion? Yes, in Runeterra. In Runeterra. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. From old, I'm very, I'm very hurt from the old days. Him and Lee Sin had had messed okay. my life up. I wasn't sure if like you were a mid laner who just got, oh no you know, pooped on all the time. No, he's pretty cool <laughs> in league. I I feel he's like yeah, a summoner. Yeah, yeah. I'm all about that. In Runeterra, hate yeah. the man. But I am okay. mostly excited that we're seeing, we see. Like, the return of actual Targon. I mean, this isn't just, like, Zoe Nami Targon, right, where there's using elusives and things like that. There's three Sunburst in this deck. There's three Sunhawks in this deck. There's the yeah. Fangs in this deck, right? Mm -hmm. There's, like, legit Targon cards back. There's two Star Shaping, for the love of everything, Cruzen. There's yep. Star Shaping. Like, I was so excited star to see shaping. Targon in general, let alone seeing Heimerdinger on top of this. But uh, did you get a chance? I mean, you saw this deck get piloted, right? This deck oh, yeah. was crazy. Un unfortunately, not very often because it was banned more often than you'd expect. And it was kind of just uh, like a, they don't know what it's going to do, so let's just yeah, ban it because yeah. I don't want to deal with that. Which is an advantage. Like, if, you, if you're if you a good deck builder and can bring something like this, like, that is a definite advantage going yeah. into an event like this. Like, if you can predict the meta and people are like, yeah, I have hundreds of reps against these other decks. I know how to play. I know I match up. That deck is total wild card. It might not be the most optimal ban, <laughs> yep. but I don't know what the heck it is, so get it out of here. Yep, but I know uh, my other matchup tables, so screw this card. <laughs> screw this deck. Right, yep. right. But, yeah, it was it was very fun to watch. Uh, yeah, it was. I feel like I have only saw it two or three times. Yeah. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. But I was going to say, not a whole lot. Yeah, um, but it was a slot. It was very successful, quite frankly. I think it, it lost was. once. Um, yeah, it sounds right. Uh, but like, yeah, the, the it's it's funny because like on paper, just the the you know the whole meme of of uh, him being a gift for Renekton and that he's so Heimerdinger is so easy to kill. Uh, but the you know I feel like the value you get from everything else in the deck makes it so that he's not your only win condition. Right, exactly. Uh, he's, he's a big one, but like. Yeah, I, I don't I don't really even know what to say about it other than like go watch a VOD. It was super fun to watch. <laughs> it was. She who's my hero. It was I, I yeah, as soon as I saw that lineup, I was like, my gosh, I, I think I think a lot of people were like, Yeah, I, I'm pulling for this guy. It was such a fun deck. Um yeah, it, it does show off a lot of the just the power of hand uh you know, card generation, I mean, and you know, hand advantage. I, they you know, with loping telescope. I know I'm I'm saying looping, I'm an awful person, I'm sorry guys. But yeah, loping telescope. Um Yeah, that, that's the meme. You got it, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bandle City Mare, the Fangs, Zoe herself creating cards, Heimerdinger himself creating cards right and they just create all of these cards they protect their key units they stall the game out and then they just start blasting and i mean like there is but the, the cool thing about this thing, like like you said we were talking about surprise value to this deck right there was a clear misplay with a sunburst because he sunbursted the person and the guy sharp sighted i forget who it was but sharp sighted to try to yeah. avoid the sunburst but like yeah if you haven't seen i i, I literally play leona all day, every day. I'm, I'm obsessed with Leona deck still. But if you haven't played that in a while, you forget that Sunburst silences before it does the six damage when it's daybreak, so it ignores that. And that's an yeah. advantage. I mean, he used that advantage, you know? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, and it's crazy. It's it's nice and it's humbling and, and reminding that, like, even the best players in the world make mistakes sometimes. Exactly. Uh because that's that's a pretty understandable mistake, honestly. Yeah. Like a card you never see, an interaction you haven't seen uh, in probably a year at this point. Right. Uh, you know, 
that 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 like like I uh, I remember watching it live, and again, like I said, for the for when we're talking about casters, like it's way easier to catch this stuff when you're watching the stream than yeah. when you're involved in it. But I remember like literally yelling at my monitor, like, "What are you?" doing? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, it's like you never want to see someone you know lose because of something like that. Uh, yeah. So that was rather unfortunate, but like, like you said, to your point, it's an advantage of bringing an off-the-wall deck because you're going to catch some stuff like that sometimes. Yeah, for sure. It was also funny. Did you watch that game as it happened? Yeah, yeah, I was live for that okay, one. Okay, yeah. yeah. It was funny, too, because it was like we had she who had his camera on, and he just looked at the camera like, Is okay. Uh-oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little shrug. Like, yeah, oh. he's like, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, that was that was rough, man. Uh, yeah. The last one I, that I want to highlight is, or that Mezzanine highlighted that we're going to talk about is, I mean, just so fun to see. This is, and I forget, I wish I knew who said the quote, but this is uh, a Darkness Dex that uh, Yamato brought, who got second. But somebody, uh, when they were watching this, watching this deck live, it was like, this isn't even like your standard Darkness deck. This is like Yamato just went through and hit all the cards that said Darkness on it and added them <laughs> to the deck. Because it does have a lot of the weirder cards. I mean, there are a lot more Darkness cards that he could have added, but it, this is not your typical looking Darkness deck. Yeah, that still was on the ladder. Maker. It's not one I see in normal. Right. Uh, and I should clarify, when we say normal, we mean NA standard normal, right? Because every region yeah, right, exactly. plays the game wildly differently. But yep. yeah, uh, I don't remember, and I could be wrong on this, but at least I, I never played Darkness because I actually still don't have three Senna. But um, I, I don't remember seeing Rekindler in these. That's things. that's the other thing, as you say. Yeah, Rekindler, I don't believe, is on that. I mean, okay. you're obviously not resummoning uh, Vagar. He's only going to be a lower attack, but Senna is going to be your strongest champion, so you're going to resummon her. And yeah, I mean, if, if she's leveled, yeah, it's great. You can get a lot of, a lot of value out of that. Oh, well, yeah. But yeah, I mean, this is a control deck as well. I mean, we talked about how uh, control really wasn't that strong on ladder, but it had a really good performance here at Worlds. This is kind of like the third deck. I mean, even Heimer Zoe tends to lean toward the control archetype more than anything else. Um, and this is just another one. This is a, a super controlly deck. They have a lot of value. Again, you're seeing Otter Plus one drop, Conchologist two drop. They're both just so good. And then you go through and you have your darkness cards here. And I mean, this was this deck was awesome to watch. I mean, there were so many top decks here that saved him at the end too. I remember seeing like Extali Sentinel coming out and just stabilizing the mm -hmm. board so well and even finishing off a game, I believe. And you know, there's just so much value here in between this package. And it's just, uh, again, one of the most interesting decks brought. And it's one of the pre-made archetypes, you know, I'll put pre-made in quotes, but one of the pre-made archetypes taking yeah. second at Worlds. It went Which, it, it went undefeated, by the way. It, it did. It never it, dropped a game. It did not drop a game all of Worlds. And and the, which is especially impressive because, I mean, the the general uh, competitive community that I keep up with. Obviously, yeah, I don't keep up with you know the Japanese competitive uh, um, scene, but like at least NA and and EU, like it was pretty universal agreement that this was a solid B tier deck. Yeah, right? like it was good, but not great. It had some bad matchups. It's not worth bringing to a tournament. And like. Yamato made this deck look invincible. He uh, did. He really did. It was it was just super cool to watch. And I don't even really like the deck that much. Like uh like it's not like I like control, but this I don't know, it's not exactly my type of control. Uh but man, watching it was fun. It like, was. Um it was funny. I, I watched an interview after Worlds where Alan was talking about it and uh, he said like that Yamato was like uh well, I think he said something along the lines of the only good player he played all weekend, but I think he was obviously <laughs> being a little hyperbolic. But, but you know, it, he was a relatively, from our perspective, unknown player going in. Yeah. He wasn't like a favorite or anything, but man, he proved like he is a extremely good Legends of Runeterra player, and he yeah. deserves every bit of success he had. It was really cool to watch. Yeah, he piloted. I love, I love watching the lesser known players come up and do well perform super well yeah he i mean he piloted everything well but yeah like you said it, it, when he was on darkness it felt it felt legit i mean it was like wow yeah. why, why are more people not playing this deck right now this right. he made it seem like oh, that, that. And, and then you play it and then it's like kind of hard to they pilot are it. now <laughs> yeah they are now <laughs> i actually was funny when right after worlds i was like okay after everybody watched all of these decks at worlds people are going to be bringing like darkness and yeah feel the rush and 
So I just, I've became the villain and I started playing Vandal Tree. There you go. So Someone's <laughs> got to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, if everyone's going to be playing all these super slow control decks, I'm going to try and take advantage of that. Yep. So, uh, Love it. But that's, why, that's, why, that's why I like um, metas like this with so much variety. Yeah, that right. You can always try and get a beat on the meta and try to counter it. It's fun. I think that article did a really good job at highlighting just how crazy. And obviously, those are three of the more interesting decks that were brought to Two Worlds. There were a lot of repeats with Draven Caitlin, uh, like I said, with Sivir Auction, with uh, Zoe Nami, a couple others as well. But, I mean, those were three of the more interesting decks. But overall, final closing words on worlds in general uh i would give you know uh, i'll go a b for how riot did there's definitely some things they could improve on maybe a b minus uh but yeah like the the tournament in general watching it i I had way more fun than i thought i'm not a huge like tournament watcher i don't watch tournaments every weekend um you know i like some of some things here and there for some games to watch but in general i don't watch a whole lot of like live video games but man i was having a blast all three days uh, watching all yeah. the way. I watched because it was it started early so I was at work Thursday Friday loving watching it from work and then Saturday uh when that the world was on I was like I have to I have to tune into this like this is, I'm so I don't know what you're talking annoyed. about I was digital diligently working no yeah all day. I was a hundred percent focused on work <laughs> that's yeah. what I meant that's uh, what I meant I I was probably a little harsh with my C grade at Riot earlier on so I think I, I like your BB minus uh, uh their um, I'm gonna amend my score. To yeah, that. yeah. I mean, like I said, if if you if you don't know like me or, or what I'm trying like what I'm passionate about, like it sounds like I'm being really negative, but overall, I can't say enough how much fun Worlds was. Like it was yeah. a really great experience to watch. Um, yeah, I just you know want more people to be able to enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, if you're not helping new players, then uh, you know, yeah, not doing it right, and exactly. definitely had way more room to grow there. Uh, we do have a patch. We're really just going to run through this. There's nothing really. So they did put a patch out. We kind of expect no changes coming to the game until I think this is like August or August. Well, October 20th, I believe uh, is the right. next balance patch. And after that, I believe it's November for the next actual release, I believe, okay. um, which yeah. is like the yeah. PVE release, which we'll, we'll push off till next week to kind of discuss the following a couple months of content that we have coming from uh the runeterra team but this patch added one really cool thing which i can highlight real quick which is the return of the timo and fizz old art skins which were you know favorites of a lot of people uh and the cool thing is you can uh you actually just have to go into the shop and buy these <clears throat> if you own three of both champions you'll just be able to buy these for free and now you have the uh, old skins and they'll act like uh, champion skins currently do so you'll be able to just equip these skins uh right on if you'd rather play with the old timo or fizz art which it was a pretty big complaint a lot of people were kind of you know were a huge fan of the new arts so yeah yeah i mean it's, it's a good yeah. move by them great yeah i agree uh, like why not it's cool they already had it in the game seems pretty easy right um, so yeah happy to see that yeah i always like giving the people options yeah exactly uh, there are some random bug fixes, which is always great because there are a decent amount of bugs that, uh, were in the game in general. One kind of weird thing was that the weekly vault bonus capsules will now provide cards from all expansions, expansions, not just foundations. So apparently I, I have not played enough to get a bonus capsule in my weekly vault. I typically get to like level oh, no? 10 to 13 yeah. or so. Um, but it's okay. been, it's been at least a month or so before I've gotten like a level 14 volt or whatever. Uh, for the bonus capsule so i didn't even realize that was a thing that they only provided things from foundations so that's just a great change in general yeah returning players now if they want to grind out extra bonus capsules they can get you know if they have all the foundations they can get stuff for new sets so sure yeah it's fun I've, I've gotten bonus capsules like a number of times but i never really paid that close attention to know that right. they only gave foundations cards but yeah, I just, I mean, most things are, are coming through as duplicates anyway, so I didn't think of it. That, that is, that is nice because you want people to be able to, you know, get as much of the collection as possible. So yeah, exactly. The the last thing we want to talk about uh, for the next like ten or so minutes is that uh, Ruben Zhu, who is the, uh, he's a designer. Uh, he has designed Aphelios, Akshan, and Viego as champions, so both of the champion releases. But on top of that, he's designed and done some work on other cards uh, throughout, including Scion as well. But he is also the live balance lead. So uh, he's in charge of most of the balance updates, and he works hand-in-hand with uh, Riot over Geddes and Alex Lee, who is like the delivery guy in general um, for uh, just all live content. 
So uh, he works with those guys. He occasionally will do like a Q&A stream. And he did one with Alex Lee before and he's done. He's been on Progress Day way back in the day, which I believe they're going to do that again. So hopefully that happens because those are always great interviews. But he decided to do a gameplay stream uh, and he started with just kind of a chat, a Q&A chat. And I was hanging out and it lasted a couple hours. I just hung out for the first hour or so for the chat and then I had to go. But a couple interesting things uh, that was said. Uh, one, and I think probably the most interesting, which we spend the most time talking about, is that that new live balance plan that they've been teasing for what now, Chris, in multiple months, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, since the whatever patch that was, where there it was patch nine, I think, where yeah. there wasn't any updates. Yeah, it's been probably about two, almost three months now. Yeah, so they've been saying that they have a new cadence. You know, there was a big blow up feedback at, uh, with Riot to Gettys on Reddit, and everyone was really upset. No changes were happening, and it was this huge blow up and giant drama, blah, blah, blah. But essentially, what it boiled down to was that uh, everyone, most of the players uh, that were playing the game, thought that their balance cadence had changed significantly, and we weren't getting as frequent of balance patches as we had previously gotten. So they wanted to uh, just see a return to higher levels of balance cadence um and they said you know what we're going to completely reevaluate and change our entire really theory on live balance and go back to the drawing board to see what we want to do and like cruz said it's been two to three months since we've we've heard anything and this was kind of the first anything that we heard and really all he all he said was that he has seen that plan the live balance plan they're not ready to share anything yet but he says it's extremely intricate uh, it has the ability to do a lot more on the fly hot fixing like they just did for worlds, which is mm-hmm. a huge bonus because, you know, like if something does become that problematic, great, you can just shut it down quickly. Uh, and he's just very excited about it in general. So, uh, is that promising to you cruising? Mean, uh, yeah, I love it. Like, I, I mean, it's hard to say exactly without having any details at all, but I right. mean, I, all I've wanted from the beginning was was frequent updates that like keep the game interesting. So, uh, you know, knowing that that's coming, it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens with the balance patch on the twentieth of October because right. Um, I think we mentioned that this is the this will be the first season that does not coincide with a new release. So, right. um, you know, it could get a little stale, but hopefully, there's a balance patch that's big enough to like spice it up a little bit yep. um and knowing that they can they're at least working on or almost ready for a hot fix schedule that can be more uh reactive is great um uh, because i yeah I, I want to see them be able to respond to those things to keep the game in a healthy state yeah so yeah for sure um, i mean i think <laughs> kudos kudos to them it's good stuff yeah i, I want to see the plan obviously like Cruz said we don't we don't know for sure but I'm glad that it wasn't just something that was said and then kind of like, yeah, we'll get back to that and we'll just keep doing your own thing. I'm glad it actually is being worked on. Uh, yeah, and I mean, hey, the, the hot fix before Worlds was a gamble, but it worked pretty well. Um, yep. It could have made the Worlds meta pretty stale, but it made it pretty dang good, so that was great. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it just for more good things, obviously, and we'll see, we'll see when we get there. And like you said, yeah, I mean, that October 20th patch, maybe they'll release some more details about it then, because uh, uh, that's the next patch, and it's still a month away from now. Yeah, and other than on uh, October 20th, really the only other thing that I remember being talked about was, unless you have something else, but I remember uh, him admitting that Lost Souls was most likely problematic. Yeah, 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 I remember that. I saw that too, and, and it wasn't, it was funny because it wasn't uh, like an official statement or anything like that. He was very casual about it. He was just, <laughs> I think he was, somebody brought it up and he was read it in chat and was like, uh, Lost Souls is probably, but uh, yeah, 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 it's probably pretty problematic. <laughs> <laughs> Are we reading too much into that? Or is that, does that mean it, no, it possibly I mean, means I, something? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's probably going to be something done there. I don't know what it will be because it, I don't know how you fix it necessarily outside right. of, I don't know, maybe you make it, uh, you have the, one of them gets obliterated when it dies or something, so you can't live it forever. I don't know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, at least it was nice to know that it was on their radar, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they did want to push the discard package to have, like, a hand-neutral type of uh, feel instead of, like, you know, a negative play state. But, man, that thing is uh, quickly turning the neutral into a very positive. Oh, uh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. really frustrating. <laughs> yeah, that card is good. I mean, yeah, you can nerf, I guess, some of the stats to make the card slightly just worse in general. Um, mm. But, like, 
uh, yeah, I don't know if they're going to take away the whole infinite loop mechanic. Because right now, what? I mean, you need to obliterate it or silence the three. Yeah. I mean, like aloof travelers, if it, I guess if it hits the four, but if you discard like their eight costs, it still just creates the yeah. four mm-hmm. costs. So you can't do like hand yeah, disruption. Maybe it comes back with one less power every time or something. I, I don't know, but uh, yeah. yeah. Hopefully they do something about it. Yeah. Yeah, pretty uh, nuts. And and I other thing, the only other thing I do remember hearing, and like this isn't you know, I don't know, an official update either, but it was just something I, I overheard him saying was talking about uh, loping telescope, uh, adding. Uh, I think the idea he brought up was making it so that it couldn't discover itself, oh. and so that that would apply to other cards that can discover things as well, like traveler, for example, just to kind of yeah. uh, put an end to the infinite loop possibility. So. Um, looping telescope might no longer be looping telescope, so that'd be a cool change. Yeah, so I, I definitely wasn't saying it wrong. I was saying it right the whole time. Is what you're saying? That's right. That's right. You were just so bought yeah. into the meme that it overtook the the real card. That's it. <laughs> yeah, no, those uh, infinite value engines that are really cheap are pretty rough, right? Like two cost thing. Yeah. If, if it makes itself, you're pretty much picking that like most of the time. Like on turn two, like if it's early, why not just pick an extra looping yeah. telescope so you can just keep generating that hand value it just it becomes super nuts that card might need more attention someday too i don't know but that's at least a, a decent start yeah a lot of it depends on on uh, i think the power level of bandle tree down the line oh yeah it could be a problem for that as well with that in lost mirror but uh yeah. as far as like it, right in its current state it's more problematic than just that one deck so uh um, yeah again mm-hmm. just happy to hear it's on the radar yeah yeah that's about all i remember from ruben stream in general um yeah, I don't think anything else. I mean, like, check it out for sure. But, like, in general, uh, those were, like, three of the bigger takeaways. There was really cool just in general hanging out, and it just felt really fun to be there and just him chatting with the community and just about the games in general, about worlds in general, and then playing some games after the fact. So not saying, like, that's the big thing. Those are just kind of like the, if you miss the stream, here's some kind of cool – if you're just that guy who's Googling, like, all right, well, what's coming next, ball? But you just want to know a little bit of a sneak peek behind the curtain. That's kind of what was given away that I remember at least uh, from, from watching. So – that was pretty much it from Ruben stream. Uh, as far as us, that's pretty much going to do it for episode 78. We have the next couple weeks lined up here until the 20th, which will be that balance patch. Uh, I'm doubting we're getting any other big announcements. I mean, world's just finished. I'm sure that whole team is just taking a breather for a couple days. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. I'm, I'm sure they're getting ready to ramp up and start really pumping out some more stuff soon. So uh, if there's anything super exciting, we'll be here. If not, we'll probably grab some uh, some guests and try to get a couple cool interviews going in the next couple weeks for uh, leading up to episode 80. We're getting close. Yeah. yeah. Big di- big uh, milestones. Let's yep. go. That's it. Uh, but other than that, uh, other than that, I guess really just huge shout out to Patreons, to all our supporters, all our listeners. Thank you guys for the likes and the tweets, the shares, all that stuff. I mean, I know I don't say appreciate retweets every time I tweet, but anytime you do, really do appreciate the shares and everything like that. It helps so much. Uh, the YouTube algorithm loves when you guys like and comment. So thank you for that. Thank you for uh, Artist of War and chat who subbed tonight for on Twitch. That also helps. Just goes back to the cast as well. So thank you guys for all those things. And uh, Chris, any final words for episode 78? No, not really. I mean, just reiterate again, like how much fun Worlds was to watch. Like I am very excited about the future of the game, both from casual uh, PVE competitive perspective. I think there's a really bright future ahead for runeterra and i'm excited to see it you know come to fruition yeah it's excited to be a part of it well, that's right until next time guys that's episode 78 deuces thank you for checking this episode of the twin sons podcast out if you're looking to support us in other ways you can check us out on youtube at the twin sons podcast you can also check us out on discord join our discord where we have tons of great discussions and keep you posted on all of the content we make you can follow us on twitter which is just twitter.com slash the twin sons pod. You can also follow our co-host cruising and Josh and even Mikey all on Twitter as well. Uh, all of those links will be in the description of the video or the podcast that you just listened to or watched as well as uh, Twitch streams. We have all four of us are also streaming on Twitch occasionally. So you can feel free to dive into those. If you want to support us on Patreon to go even a step further, feel free to head over to patreon.com slash the twin sons podcast. We have a bunch of different tiers there where you can actually uh, get a different upgrades and different support for the show and actually get some nice rewards as well. And finally, if you want to check us out on Teespring, we have a bunch of cool swag based on the logos that we've had made for the podcast over the life of the show itself. So thank you guys again for all of the support and, uh, Catch you next time.